Hey Bobcat fans, welcome back to Dear Montana State, our video series dedicated to conversations with you, the fans. I'm joined today with Coach Jeff Choate of Bobcat Football. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm doing good, doing good. Enjoying a little bit of sunshine here in, in, uh, in Bozeman, so it's nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful day right now. Um, how's the Choate family doing overall? I want to check in on you guys first. Yeah, we're doing good. Uh, I was, uh, I got a little taste of maybe what retirement might be like, you know, <laughs> up at our lake place in Coeur d'Alene, uh, Janet and, and, uh, and JC and Jory and, and uh, myself were able to spend probably more time together as a family in the last month than we have in forever. Uh, so, you know, we had a lot of projects that we worked on and had our daily hike or fishing or whatever our activity was. And uh, the kids had school and I had Zoom meetings and, and phone calls and those types of things. But it was really, I mean, you know, I think you've just got to, you know, count your blessings and not your problems. I, I, I think that Jen and I were talking, we'll look back on COVID-19 2020 and we'll be like, you know, that was some good family time. You know, and we've been fortunate that we really haven't been impacted by it. Uh, from a health standpoint, and obviously, you know, our hearts go out to those that have been impacted. But, uh, you know, in times like this, you just got to kind of keep your head straight ahead and, 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 again, count your blessings and not really, really worry about your problems. I think that's such a testament to the different personalities and types of people we have on our coaching staff. Because I think everybody I've talked to um, the last couple of weeks, that's, that's what they've said. They're just grateful for the family time. So always a silver lining. Well, Coach, we've collected questions from fans that we're going to go through. Um, the first one is talking about the spring season. Obviously, this semester looks completely different than any of us have ever experienced. How are you navigating being a coach, um, not physically around your student-athletes, both being there supportive, and then how are you gauging progress through um, what is normally a, a really big preparation season? It's an interesting time. Uh, you know, it's not unprecedented. I mean, there's been times where, where – um, Things like sports have been interrupted before. And, uh, you know, it is difficult because we have like a new offensive coordinator, Justin Udy, and not having the springtime to be able to kind of implement these things. But I'm really proud of our staff. I mean, they've really embraced um, things like this, these, the, the ability to work remotely with our student athletes. One of the things that we've done is really establish a daily routine. Football's a little bit different. We have a, a large group. And so each one of the coaches is kind of responsible for – uh, you know, I kind of challenge them like, hey, you know, Byron, you're the head coach of the D-line. So how the D-line goes is going to be based on your leadership and, and your expectations and standards. And that's been established a long time ago. But the, our guys did a really nice job of establishing a routine. And I know this because Jory was up at the cabin with us. And every day between 7 and 8, Bobby would check in and they'd have, you know, a Zoom meeting with the linebacker crew and just make sure that, you know, physically they're, they're good, emotionally they're good. Um, check they have individual academic meetings and then they were able to have uh, up to six hours a week right now of football related activity and so a lot of video uh, we bought some technology that has kind of uh, allowed us to you know dig in a little bit more on some of the remote learning um, it's a little bit more geared towards um, like remote quizzes and things like that that you can add the playbook aspect and the video aspect together it integrates well and so we've invested in some technology and we've embraced it and I think that's been awesome I think we've got a really strong culture I think our guys all want to get back together. That's definitely one of the things that I hear from them. But they're excited to get back together to work, not to, you know, not to high five and party. I mean, it's like, hey, we've had our downtime. Let's go. To, let's get back at this. And so um, that's that's how we, we've been going about it. And, and every day, Monday through Friday, needs to be the same. You know, we have our routine. We have our time when we work. We have our time when we work out. We have our time when we relax. We have our time when we do school. And uh, we have to stick to those routines. And I think the coaches have been awesome because they've allowed those guys to establish routines that work for them time-wise, but they've also held them accountable. I like that a lot. Um, another question we had from a fan related to spring was that um, I don't believe we got any spring practices in, correct? This all happened before that. Um, there definitely are some schools around the country that did get at least a few practices in. Do you think they're at a competitive advantage when we get to the other side of this? No. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a big fan of spring ball. Like spring ball to me is for new coaching staffs, freshmen and sophomores. And uh, I'm not, I'm none of those right now. So <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, I, I just think it's hard for there to be a lot of carryover between something that happens in March and April and something that's going to happen in August and September. And so football is such a long sport. It's so competitive and physical. I get really concerned about losing guys. And when that happened, my first couple of years as a head coach, we had some guys get injured in spring. And uh, that's just devastating to me as a coach to, you know, I understand that that's part of the game, but you never want to see a kid get hurt in a meaningless competition. And so we try to, 
you know, get a little bit of timing work done. Last year, we only ended up about, with about seven real practices. Um, I think if they just let us use a football more, I'd be happy. We don't need to necessarily put the pads on. But we'll make up for lost time when we get to August. That's what we've always done around here. And really, the summer is the most important time. Uh, we'll see what that looks like. There's obviously some uncertainty there, but we're planning a couple different eventualities. And we've already had some discussions within the athletic department of what it might look like as we get back with not just the football student athletes, but all the student athletes in terms of how do we maintain good social distance as we open up the field house and provide opportunities for these kids to, to work out and train. So you kind of lead right into my next question, Summer. Um, how do you plan for a season um, like summer or, or what's coming next when, when there are so many unknowns at this point? I think you've got to be flexible. I mean, we, we have a couple of different working models that we are, are dialed into. One thing that's maybe a little more difficult with football is that there's so much more support staff involved uh, because we are a large group. And so I always use the analogy like this isn't, you know, we're not turning around a VW bug. I mean, this is a battleship. And so when we make decisions about changing things logistically, they impact a lot of people within the department, not just within the football program. And so having good communication with Brittany Patera in nutrition and Alex Wilcox in the weight room and Rob Higgs in training and Cami with facilities and, and Dan and just making sure that we've got a good plan. And, and we have a couple of different eventualities right now. One is plan A, which we're hopeful for, which is uh, our discretionary week would start on June 8th because the guys get off the month of May anyway. And then we would have our mandatory training starting on June 15th. And that's optimal for us. If that doesn't happen, then we'll just start kind of backing things up uh, based on how much time we do have. So looking ahead, we are still fully on sale with season ticket renewals with new season tickets. Um, but obviously this is a little bit of a different time. You and Leon penned this letter this week that we're mailing um, that I thought was fantastic, really heartfelt, just really letting the fans know that we're here for them. We're optimistic about the season. Um, but, but in your words, what do you want to tell the fans right now that might be a little uncertain? Well, you know, I think it's funny because a lot of people say you know, sports or football, is that really a big deal right now? Is that really that important? And I'd say, well, yes, it is for a variety of reasons. Um, I think it's really the cultural center of our university and our community. I mean, Saturdays in the fall at Bobcat Stadium are things that all of us look forward to for a variety of reasons. For some people, they might not be big football fans, but just that connection, that, that feeling of, uh, that, of being a part of something, like the community is, is really important. And I think that can be such a healing thing uh, after we've gone through kind of a difficult time, whether that's you're a small business owner and you've really struggled or you've been impacted directly with somebody that's gotten this illness. Uh, and so I think it is really important. I know it's, it's really important for our athletic department, for our university. I know Coach uh, President Cruzado always says that, uh, you know, we're the front porch of the university. We're, we're a way that people, you know, view us. Uh, and our success in, in the athletic arena, uh, you know, that, that defines a lot of what people think about your school. And so I think there's a lot of reasons why it's really important. I also think that it may look different. I mean, you know, we've got to have that understanding that there might be some people that say, you know what, uh, like I was talking to Casey the other day, I was like, you know what people can do? Just do what they've always done. We're not asking people to do more. Just, hey, if you've been a season ticket holder and you, you have the capability of doing that, be a season ticket holder. Let's, let's do that and we'll, we'll make it worth your while. I promise you our guys will be ready to go. I promise you they'll be – in good condition and they'll give you a great show and make you proud to be a Bobcat and, uh, and support us. And so that's kind of what my message would be is, you know, if you've been a season ticket holder, be a season ticket holder. If you are able to come to four games a year and that's something that you really look forward to and you're able to do that, then let's do that. And let's get back to, to what we all love is those Saturdays in the fall. Absolutely. Um, next question, coach, what, leadership advice do you have to um, share with anyone who is in a leadership role right now with so much uncertainty, whether they're leading a household, a small business, a large company? Um, what words of wisdom do you have to share? I think a couple things come to mind. One is just how important communication is. Um, I mean, I spend a lot of time on WebEx calls and, uh, and, uh, and Zoom meetings and things of that nature every day, but I also take time to check in with members of our our team with members of our coaching staff, members of our support staff team every day. You know, it could be five guys that I call and I'll talk to our, in our staff meeting, I'll be like, okay, Eric, give me one wide receiver to call today. Brian, give me one more offensive lineman to call today. And just those, just reaching out and touching those guys and making sure they understand that well, their personal well being is important to you. And so even if you're in a large organization, just picking one or two people today and reaching out and having that personal connection, I think is really important. Um, 
the, the thing that I'd say that sticks with me a little bit, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they had this quote by Albert Einstein. And it was uh, in the middle of uh, adversity um, lies opportunity. And I started thinking about it and reflecting on that. And I was like, that is so true. I mean, you think about even um, some of the things that ha are ta taking place in our economy where this has happened before. I mean, there were, you know, the dot-com boom was going to put certain companies out of business unless they shifted gears. And you think about a company like Walmart that, you know, was basically just a walk-in retail shop. And now they've shifted gears and embraced the kind of the technological new age. And now they're competing with Amazon to be one of the largest retailers in the world. And so it's about taking advantage of that opportunity. And I think about what happens at the beginning of a crisis or the beginning of a time of adversity is we all react. We react in different ways. We react viscerally, emotionally. Uh, maybe we make some decisions that you wish you had back or you say some things that uh, might not be appropriate at that time. Or however, however you react, that's, that's, that's human nature. You're going to react. And then at the end, we reflect, we look back on things, and we go, okay, this is what we did well, this is what we could have done better, this is what we can learn from this situation. But in the middle, that's where the opportunity lies. And so look for that opportunity, uh, whether it is in developing stronger relationships with your family or with your team, uh, within your organization, or shifting gears to meet a changing uh, economy, all of those things are present. And so stay positive and, and look for those opportunities in the middle of this time. Fantastic, I think everybody can take something from that. Um, we have two quick goofy questions for you to end this that we got from fans. One, with that awesome video you made um, a couple of weeks ago of everything you were doing to fill the time, um, you had Netflix on the big board. What were you about to watch? What's your show? So uh, season of, I can't remember, three or four of Ozarks was kind of, I was kind of pretty fired up about that. And so I went through that pretty quick. Um, and then I've just kind of been jumping around a little bit, you know, I've kind of done a little, um, just, I, I don't know, I, I watched some like documentary stuff like this. There's this Theo American's Book of Secrets, which is sometimes kind of cheesy. Sometimes it's all right, you know. Uh, it's been great. Like I loved uh, ESPN coming out with the new, um, I've watched all the 30 for 30s now because I have okay. ESPN Plus. So I've kind of plowed through, I binge watched all the 30 for 30s. And then obviously the last dance that just came yep. out on Sunday. So that was great. That got me through a couple days. <laughs> and then I did, you know, I'm a big reader. So I've been reading quite a bit. And, uh, you know, just trying to, uh, to, to make up this time and, and make the most of it. I like that. Um, Pluto TV's had a few replays that I have enjoyed watching over the last couple of weeks, yeah. including a couple of football games. Um, last question from Ian. He wants to know if you would classify a hot dog as a sandwich. Wow. Um, no, I don't think I would. I think that uh, I think it, the hot dog has its own classification as a hot dog. As a hot dog. And so uh, that would be, I would have it, its own category. Well, I can't think of a better way to uh, end this video. So thanks, Coach, for your time. I really appreciate it. Stay safe and can't wait to see you again soon. Awesome. Go Cats. Go Cats.